Dast vs SAS. What the fudge are these tools? How do they work? How do I implement them? And are they worth it? This is what we're going to discuss in this video. Before we get into it, please do me a quick favor, like this video, subscribe to the channel. We're really new, but we're trying to create great content for devs. Okay, enough about that. Let's get into it. SAST stands for Static Application Security Testing, and DAS stands for Dynamic Application Security Testing. Both these tools have the same goal, to detect vulnerabilities, security vulnerabilities that are inside your application. However, they do about it at different stages of the software development lifecycle, and they have different protocols of doing it. SAST is concerned with your source code. It's going to scan through your source code and identify vulnerabilities within it. For example, let's say that in your source code, you're using an SQL query. However, you're not using prepared statements for your SQL query, which could lead to an SQL injection attack. This is something that a SAS call could discover inside your code base. DEST, on the other hand, looks at your application after it's been compiled, once it's running, and it will launch simulated attacks against your application to try and find it. This will be against your inputs, against your API endpoints or your GraphQL endpoints, and really acting like a hacker. You can think of DAS like a hacker inside a box. DAS will also be able to find things like SQL injection vulnerabilities, but this is by launching an actual SQL injection style attack to see if your application does fail or provide an un unexpected input. So you can see that both SAST and DAS can find some of the same vulnerabilities. This doesn't mean that you pick one or the other. You absolutely need both because whilst there is some crossover, there's definitely things that one tool can find that the other can't. For example, SAST is much better at finding things like cryptographic failures if you're using outdated ha hashing algorithms or outdated cryptographic algorithms or unsafe error handling, whereas DAS is going to be much better at finding vulnerabilities in your security headers or if you have misconfigurations on your API or your infrastructure. So the two absolutely should be used together. And in some advanced cases, SAS can actually help influence the DAS tool to go after certain targets. So the two can actually work really well together. One of the biggest advantages of SAST over DAST is how early SAST can be detected in the software development lifecycle. SAST tools can run in multiple different stages. They can be on your CI CD pipeline, connected to your Git repositories, for example. You can run them as Git hooks, but you can also run them in your IDE, your development environment. So this makes it very easy for a developer to find a vulnerability very early on and then correct it. And this way, multiple team members don't need to be involved. It doesn't need to go to security. You don't need to release vulnerability reports. It's much better the earlier that you can find a vulnerability. And SAST is fantastic about this. DAST, on the other hand, does find things a little bit later. You can integrate DAST tools into your CI CD pipelines and run and run simulated attacks against them after your application is compiled. So it doesn't need to wait until production. But obviously, once it finds a vulnerability, this needs to be handled typically by a security personnel who needs to communicate with the developers to get that fixed, and then their application needs to be redeployed. It's all a little bit of a ho-hum. But as I said before, you definitely want both, but it's better to find things earlier, and SAST is run earlier in the software development lifecycle. Let's take a quick look at some of the different vulnerabilities that we can find with SAST and DAS tooling. So I'm going to just bring up here Aikido Security. Now, Aikido is a platform that does lots of different security scanning, including SAST and DAS. And what's great about it is that it's free to join, but you can also use demo data. So if you're just wanting to have a play around and seeing some of these types of vulnerabilities and how they play out, you can actually just import a demo demo data and kind of have a look straight away. So if you want to do this by yourself, you can. Let's just take a look at a couple. The first one here is uh, we have a remote code execution vulnerability. Now, this is 100 critical, so this is about as worse as it gets. And the reason for this is we're using back ticks instead of single quotation points, uh, presumably. And essentially, anything run within backtick runs as a shell command, and the output will be returned. So basically, yes, remote code execution. We have one file we can see here, and uh, it's tip I think it's listed three in three places. We can you know view that file and see, yeah, where where we have this uh, vulnerability here. This guy uh, use a different one. Let's scroll down. Here I have a JavaScript vulnerability, and this one leads to a cross-site scripting or XSS attack. And this is because it's noticed that I'm using user-controlled data or untrusted data 
in methods like inner HTML or ADA HTML. So you can see that here in the code container in a HTML and we're passing it some untrusted data. So again, we can kind of look at this file, see where exactly that code is implemented in here. And if we look at one more here, we have a Python example, and this is using a deprecated cryptographic library, in this case, PyCrypto. And obviously this is no longer maintained, it shouldn't be used, it's not considered safe anymore. So we need to find uh, basically a new library for us to perform our cryptographic tasks. So these are some simple areas that a SAS tool has found. And let's take it now, have a look at what DAST is able to find. So I'm gonna switch to DAST or surface monitoring. So you'll see here with DAS, we actually have a location. In this case, it's a URL. So this might be to your staging environment, probably if you're running security tests. And it is able to find things. Here we have uh, that it accepts invalid JWT token. So, so the DAS tool has crafted an invalid JWT token and found that the application actually accepts it. Here we have another one where the CSP header is actually not set. So this is something that DAS tools are very good at finding is when you have security headers that are uh, vulnerable. And this particular vulnerability is actually quite common. You can see down here all the domains where this is actually the case. So it's not just in one place. When you run DAS, I can almost guarantee that you're gonna find a couple of exactly this vulnerability uh, in your applications. So now that we've spent a little bit of time looking at some of the vulnerabilities that SAS and DAS can find, let's jump now into some of the common confusion around this because a lot of security tools get lumped into these categories, which really have no business being there. The first one I wanna talk about is secrets detection. A lot of SAS tools will perform some kind of secrets detection. Now, secrets detection is finding things like when you've hard coded an API key or a cryptographic key or something like that that needs to be remain private. Here's why SAS should not be considered a secrets detection tool. SAS is only really concerned with one part of your project, and that's the latest version. If you have an SQL injection vulnerability that you've solved, who cares, right? It's no longer actionable. If, however, you've hard-coded a secret, and that is in your Git history, let's say that you're on a development branch, you've hard-coded a secret, you've removed it, that secret is still a threat because your code base is very insecure, and if someone makes their way onto that, they can find those secrets and move laterally within your systems. SAST won't go back through your entire history because, well, that would just give you so much false positives, it's ridiculous. But secrets detection should do that. So that's why you can't rely on SAST for secrets detection. You need a dedicated tool for that. On the other side, on DAST, there's also a lot of misconfigurations. Firstly, let's talk about fuzzing. Now, DAST and fuzzing are actually pretty different, but often they're kind of lumped together and they can actually be part of the same tool. DAST is performing kind of structured attacks against your application. It's taking SQL injection that it knows, it's taking, it's looking at your security headers, it's attacking your site in a structured manner. Fuzzing is the complete opposite of that. It is your chaotic friend that's just throwing everything it can at your application. What fuzzing is trying to do is determine how your application handles random input. When your input is too long, when your input contains unrecognized characters, different languages, all of these types of things. This is what fuzzing is trying to do. Fuzzing is trying to break your application. DAST is trying to attack it in a structured way. So they're technically quite different. The other area is CSPM, Cloud Security Posture Management or Cloud Scanning. DAST is attacking your application with what it can see on the surface. If you wanna go a little bit deeper and talk about your cloud security and misconfigurations in your cloud, then a dedicated product is much better at this because it can connect into your cloud accounts and identify all your assets and then if there's any misconfigurations. DAS can easily miss things if it can't see them quite easily, but an attacker can take the extra time and, and look through them. So DAST is a specific tool, but it doesn't cover everything. We need to make sure we add layers on here and it's the same with SAST. So there we have it. That's the difference between SAST and DAST and a whole bunch of other things that you probably uh, didn't need to know, but now you do. If you liked the video, please make sure you like it and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. And if you have any suggestions for new content, please write it in the comment and I'll make sure that I get onto that. Until next time, have a great day.